Greetings, ladies and gents. Welcome to OTFI and the first video in my series of uh, what's new for 2018 individual features that I did promise, eventually getting around to it, is the measure tool. It's not very not very exciting, but I actually quite like what they've done here. They've done a pretty good job. Right, measure, you'll find it in all the normal places. Tools, measure. That's uh, a good way of getting to it. Uh, here's a tip. Here's a tip on the could be quicker to access toolbar. You can select the drop down arrow here and then select measure. And there it is on the could be quicker to access toolbar, which you can right click on and show below the ribbon, which makes it a quick to access toolbar because it's now no longer the furthest thing away from where you work. So that's another way of getting to it. And if you're a proper bro, you can use your 3D connection device, whichever one you use. I use the CAD mouse and the uh, Enterprise. You might use it Space Traveler, Space Mouse Pro, whatever. But you can map a button. So say, for example, the top button on the mouse that I use, you can select buttons and then go to, for example, that button there, hit the right arrow, type in the tool you want to find of measure and then map that into the button. So now when you press the button on the mouse, it calls up the measure command. It's now a proper palette or a dock browser or a or a or a box I, I don't know what the i don't know what the proper name for it is but it floats around man floats around floaties <laughs> you can drop it bottom of the browser or you can dock it to the right or wherever you want to put it drop it there you can tab between the two and shit <laughs> didn't mean to do that there we go brought it back in right there you go right so there's the measure palette it's now a lot more user friendly it's a lot more functional than it used to be you've got three selection priorities at the top Phases and edges, part priority and component priority. I don't think I need to explain what they are in this video. It's the same as, for example, uh, you shift and right click and then you've got your component priority, selection priorities on the right click menu. So faces and edges, you can zoom in and you can say, I want to I want to know the distance between this point here and that point there. And there you go. You get a very, very difficult to read, <laughs> very small and dodgy contrasted colored arrow with writing on it which is like mm, I can see a lot of people complaining about that being a bit too small if you want to make it bigger go to file go to options on the general tab increase your annotation scale to uh, I don't know whatever to click close and then we'll do the measure again uh, between there and then there and there you go it's a lot bigger than it was before all uh, right so that's the minimum distance between the two points but you've also got your delta values and this is really nice you can select the x distance the y distance and you can see the delta distances which is obviously straight along the x and the y axes the distance between those two points along x and y and then your minimum distance is the as the crow flies distance between the two points which is nice all right and you can also select position for selection one and selection two that'll give you the coordinate points for both points that you've clicked in the uh, the measure tool you've got advanced settings here as well which lets you change the precision of the uh, of the minimum distance and all the other variations you can say precision drop that down to one decimal place for example and all the values will drop down to be uh, one decimal place precision or you can have whatever you know, no decimal places or default is uh, three decimal places which is nice so that's all pretty good i like this i really do like this this is really good the part priority if you select two parts it's going to give you the minimum distance between two parts like for example that port there and that port there it's going to find the minimum distance between the two parts which will be that point there to that point there minimum distance 5.030 millimeters Yay! and it's pretty big as well ladies because i've changed it in the settings all right, angle precision. Well, that's going to change the precision of units when you do angular values. If you want to do angular values, select the uh, the part or the faces and edges, and then we can select two lines. For example, say uh, that one there, and then that one there. And there you go. There's your angle between the two. It's quite difficult to pick the edges there, but there you go. There's the angle. Uh, you can get loop length if you want to. So you'd select the measure command, and then you'd select a, a line. Like, for example, that there. And it's going to give you the length of the line. That works for arcs and curved edges and splines and stuff and anything that's bendy. So that works. Here's a tip as well. If you select the measure command and you hold down the shift button, you can select three points like this, this, and then this. And it'll give you a nice, a nice angle. A much better presented angular value. I'm sure there's a proper name for it. But it's the angle between that point there, that point there, and then that point there. Forgive me, I don't know what the proper name for that is, but it looks nice. And that's good enough for me. <laughs> that's good enough for me. Right, the one, the only thing I don't really like about the measure command is the fact that it is a nice dockable window. Yeah, you can dock it down here and you can like, oh, I'm measuring away. It's all the information down here and it's all permanently there and it's convenient and it's accessible. But then as soon as you hit another command, vanishes, it's gone. 
on. I mean, it does come back up, don't get me wrong, when you when you next do a measure, it does pop back up. It's just whenever you activate another command, it vanishes. So it would be nice just, I mean, I, I get it. I, I, I can see why they've done that. It's like it's taken up real, real estate, and do you really want to see it if you're not measuring? Well, I'd like the option. Be nice to have the option to just keep it there. But apart from that, it's pretty good, actually. I really like it. I do really like it. I like the way it's a proper panel now, and you can dock it in with the rest of your model browser or have it floating around. So that's the measure command in 2018. It's snazzy. I like the way it's presented. I like the way it's laid out. It's all nice. I do like it. You can copy and paste straight from the, the measure command into the clipboard and then paste that into other areas. And also, the I should have had something prepared for this, but I'll just do it on the fly. That's fine. None of my videos are scripted, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I can make this up as I go along. Not a problem. But this is something you've been able to do always. So say, for example, we've got an extrusion. I'm not, I don't even know why I'm showing you this. It's just tip. It's just tip. Because you've always been able to do this, and there's nothing new here. But say, for example, you want to do an extrusion, like here, and you want to extrude that to be the same length as that edge there. Right, instead of typing in a value, you can fly out and say measure that edge, and it'll say that extrusion is now the same length as that edge there. It's not parametric. If that length was to change, this length here wouldn't change. It's just it's just nice to be able to say make this the same length as that. And you can also say measure between that point and that point, so it doesn't have to be a physical edge. That's quite nice. You've always been able to do that, though. That's not new. Read there you go. That's the measure command in for 2018. Brand new and improved. Like it, love it, keep it up. All that shit. Cheers. Toodles.